In this episode of Principles of Cleometrics, we'll talk about what data is. Without doubt, we live in the age of big data. Collecting detailed information is essential for commerce and the sciences. But what is data and how can we distinguish different sorts of data and how can we store it? When we're collecting data in Cleometrics, most of the time we have observations and variables. An observation could be a person, it could be a year, or it could be a country, etc. So we always have different objects of observation, so to speak. Now we could measure certain variables. For example, we observed the population in thousands of different countries in the year 1900. This is real data, by the way. We decided to observe Denmark, France, Germany, Italy and the Netherlands. These are our observation. So let me draw that for you. We have a table. We have different countries. So our observation, observations would be Denmark, France, Germany, Italy, and the Netherlands. These are our observations and our variable is the population in the year 1900 in thousands. Now all we have to do is put in the data. Denmark would be two, four, three, two. France is three, eight, nine, oh, oh. Germany would be five, six, oh, four, six. Italy would be three. Two, eight, six, one. The Netherlands would be five, one, four, two. Now we have our first uh, table with data. As I said, our objects of observation could be virtually anything. Um, if you look at the federal debt in million mark of Germany from 1819 to 1890, uh, 1890 what would be our, our object of observation? So first of all, let me let me draw another table. So uh, another table. So we have the years, and we have the federal. Depth in million mark. And I said it's the year of eighteen eighty to the year eighteen uh, eighteen eighty five, yeah, eighteen eighty five. So eighty two. 1883, 1880, oops, 4, and 1885. So, again, um, we look at the federal debt in million mark of Germany from 1880 to 1885. What would be our object of observation? You might be tempted to say Germany, but that's not entirely correct. Basically, our Object of observation or objects of observation are the years 1880 to 1885 in Germany. These data points here, these are our objects of observation. So let's apply the same technique we used to construct our population table. First of all, we put in the observations and then go ahead and put in the data for your, for your variable, the federal debt a million mark. So in the year 1880, there was 218, 267, 319, 348, 
374 and 410, yeah, 10. And again, we constructed another data set. If you're observing a certain variable over consecutive time intervals, we speak of a time series. So this is a time series. So now we know that our observations could be virtually anything. Statistical programs such as R or SPSS like to order the observations from one to infinity. And that makes sense. So for example, the year 1880 is the first observation. 1881 is the second observation. 1882 is the third observation. 1883, fourth, and so on. Yeah? Um, in our first example, uh, Denmark would be the first um, observation. France would be the second, and so on. Now you, you get you get how to do it. Um, giving every observation a distinguishable number is a very convenient way of sorting uh, this information. As soon as we dive into R, you'll appreciate it. Um, we we know now um, what an observation is, but what is a variable? Well, the name says it all. Its value can vary. You see that right there. Yeah, its value can vary. This is our observ This is our variable, and this or these are the actual values of our variable. Um, if you think about it, what should be the most general breakdown of a variable? So our our population data was a variable, right? Let's take another example. Um, so we have a ruler that would be a head of state or, or government, and we have his or her nationality. So let me take the uh, goal. We have Thomas Jefferson. We have Queen Elizabeth, Elizabeth. Hope we can squeeze in a second right there, okay. And we have Otto von Bismarck. Bismarck. Oh. So the nationality, this is our variable. The goal, he was French. Thomas Jefferson, he was an American. Queen Elizabeth II, British. And Otto von Bismarck, he was German. Our observations would be uh, the famous uh, heads of state or government, um, but the variable nationality is of a different sort than our past variables. The most general way to distinguish variables is to label them A as numerical, so we can label them as, let, let me get a different color, A as, nu, oops, no, not numerical, it's numerical, Or we can label them as um, categorical. Categorical. Categorical data, uh, like the nationality. A numerical data uses numbers, and categorical variables most often use letters, although this is not always the case. School grades, for example. Is this numerical? It might look like it, but in fact it's not. A great rule to assess whether a variable is numerical or categorical is to ask yourself whether you can do calculations with it. If you get an A or 1.0, uh, 1 uh, so for example you get a 1.0, um, and you get a D or a 4.0, uh, this is these are your two grades you get. Um, can you do calculations with it? Can you put a plus into here? Well, that would be 5.0, right? Um, can you do that? Now, one, uh, one plus four is five, but that doesn't make any sense. 
So we can also distinguish categorical data right here um, between regular categorical data, that would be this, whether national, like French, American, British, German, and so-called ordinal data. These might be, numer numer or they might look numerical, but you cannot actually do calculations with it. So this is not numerical, this is ordinal data, okay? A conven convenient way to store, and most scientists do this, um, for, for categorical data is to code it. For example, you have the var variable ethnicity. Now let, let's let's get some room here. You have the variable ethnicity. Um, and your variable could take the values Caucasian, for example, as a shorthand it. Uh, your variable can take the uh, value Afro-American. Your variable could take the value Asian. Or your variable uh, could take the uh, value Latino and others, yeah? And others. Um, a great way to store this would be to give them numbers. Caucasian would be one, Afro-American would be two, Asian would be three, Latinos would be four, Others would be five. Now you can do this. This would be ordinal data, right? You cannot do calculations with it. Asian plus Latino, three plus four, that doesn't make sense, right? So uh, this is a great way to store your data. Um, this, this makes it much easier to type in your data, plus you won't do any typos. Yeah? So now we're done. I hope um, you learned something how to store your data, what a variable is, what, a, what an observation is. And this is very fundamental for our further videos. So um, if you didn't understand the concept of it, you might just want to give it a try again. Just, just look over the video and uh, I'm sure you will understand it.